The year is 2030. The temperature is 99 degrees inside your home. And you try to change the temperature, but you can't. When you go up to the thermostat, there's a warning saying governor's orders. We're in an energy emergency and you can't change the temperature. You're going to have to do something else. So you decide, you know what, maybe I'll just go outside and go for a, go for a drive in the car, get some fresh air. So you go into your garage and use your electric vehicle. You sit down, you tap on the screen, turn the car on, but it says car not charged, charge minimal. And you're like, oh, uh, and then it says under it, energy emergency, governor's orders, no car charging allowed. And you go, well, I guess I'll walk. So you get out and you start walking. And then all of a sudden you see a social worker at the, at the end of the road, about a block from your house. And you're like, oh, what's this? And they say, sorry, sir, you're in a quarantine zone and you're not allowed to leave. It's illegal if you cross this threshold. Better go back to your house. So you go back to your house, which is actually a pod. You pop it open, grab a bag of crickets, sit down outside and munch away as you sweat your ass off. Welcome to the future they want for you, my friends. And the funny part is, as much as that first part sounds like a, 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 dy a dystopian nightmare future, it's actually happening right now. That's the story. Thousands of XL customers locked out of thermostats during energy emergency. 22,000 people lost control of temperatures in their homes for hours on Tuesday. Seriously. People in California, it's 99 or it's 90 degrees or whatever. And they go to their thermostat saying, I would like it to be but a little bit colder. And the thermostat gave them a warning saying, nope, governor's orders. That's the future, baby. Hey, man, my recommendation to all of you is go analog. Make sure you have a car that's like from the 70s or the 60s with no computers in it. Totally mechanical. Make sure your thermostat is totally mechanical and stay, stay away from the Internet of Things smart homes. Because one day you're going to walk up to your refrigerator and it's going to say, I'm sorry, Dave, if you open the refrigerator, it will get hot inside and spoil your food. And because we're in an energy emergency, I can't cool your food for you. That's your warning. You know, it's like, OK, the fridge will keep your food a little cold, but not if you open up. Mm -mm -mm -mm, you're eating too much anyway. I mean, it'll get to that point where you go to the fridge and, you're, and you'll try to open the door and you're going to it's going to be voice command and you're going to be like, refrigerator open. I'm hungry. I'm sorry, Dave. You're looking a little thick. Perhaps a glass of water. And you're gonna be like, but I want to eat. Yo, it's not just this. I, I love this story here too. Californians told not to charge electric cars days after gas car sales ban. Ooh, this is the best part. All the electric vehicles, you know why this, this is great? The electric vehicles have, on, they're all computerized. You're going to walk into your garage and it's going to say no driving permitted climate crisis, energy crisis. You're going to plug your car in being like, I need to go to the hospital, see my dad. He's dying. And it's going to be like, oh, I'm sorry, Dave. We're in an energy emergency and charging is forbidden. You are giving away all of your agency. But I, I must uh, be honest. You know, you can always walk. Oh, that's right. There's going to be a quarantine guy or some checkpoint. And they're going to be like, sir, do you have your QR code phone? And you're going to be like, my phone's dead. I have no electricity. Sir, without your QR card, I can't let you through. You know, listen, I live right there. My dad lives right there. He's sick. He needs my help. Sir, step back, sir. And you're getting tased and you're like, Ugh. there's the electricity. They couldn't give it to you for, for, for your phone, but they'll jab it right into your chest. Cal matters. California can't waver on water regulation. Oh, Oh, it gets better. This is amazing. I'm just loving the current state that is California. And this is probably why people are fleeing. So let's revise our earlier story. You're sitting in your house and then your temperature is rising. It's the heat of the day. And so you walk over and you try changing the thermostat, but you can't. It says warning energy emergency. So you decide, OK, well, maybe I'll just go for a drive in my car. You can't. Car wasn't charging. Car can't be driven. Energy emergency. So you decide to go for a walk. And uh, you get a text from your from your dad and he says, I'm sick. And you're like, oh, man, then your phone dies because it wasn't charging overnight. And there's a guy blocking you. And he says, sir, you can't cross her. That's your QR code. And then you're like, please help me. No. So after all of that, getting tased with burn marks to your chest, you walk home and you say, I'll just splash a little bit of water on my face. It's so hot. And then you turn the water knob and nothing comes out. And then you get a prompt. I'm sorry, Dave. The water has been disabled due to a water crisis. And then you plop down, sit there and slowly dehydrate. 
sitting outside your pod eating your crickets. Denver ABC reports, during the dog days of summer, it's important to keep your home cool. But when thousands of XL customers in Colorado tried adjusting their thermostats Tuesday, they learned they had no control over the temperatures in their own homes. Temperatures climbed into the 90s Tuesday, which is why Tony Tolerico tried to crank up the air conditioning in his partner's Arvada home. I mean, it was 90 out, and it was right during the peak period, Tolerico said. It was hot. That's when he saw a message on the thermostat stating the temperature was locked due to an energy emergency. Normally, when we see a message like that, we're able to override it. In this case, we weren't. So our thermostat was locked in at 78 or 79. Okay, all right. You know, it's not turning it off. It's just saying it's going to be 80 degrees. So strip down to your drawers, splash a little water on your face, and you paid for this. Congratulations. On social media, dozens of XL customers complained of similar experiences, some reporting home temperatures as high as 88 degrees. Excel confirmed to, De- to Denver 7 that 22,000 customers who had signed up for the Colorado AC Rewards Program were locked out of their smart thermostats for hours on Tuesday. I love it. The dystopian world that we live in. I'm sorry. You opted into the rewards program. It's your fault. And kind of is. That's what they're going to do. They're going to be like, Hello, customer. If you sign up for our rewards program, you'll actually get discounts on your energy bill every month. And what you don't read in the fine print is that they get to control your thermostat. It's a voluntary program. Let's remember that this is something that customers choose to be a part of based on the incentives. Amazing. Customers receive a $100 credit for enrolling in the program and $25 annually. You see how they get you? But Ron, uh, Romine said customers also agree to give up some control to save energy and money and make the system more reliable. So it helps everybody for people to participate, participate in these programs. It is a bit uncomfortable for a short period of time, but it's very, very helpful. Now, I'm going I'm to pause right there and just say, let's, let's be real, man. If there's rolling blackouts, you ain't got uh, air conditioning anyway. So the idea with this is if 22,000 people set their thermostats to 78 degrees, everybody gets to be better off than 90 degrees. But if everyone tries jamming their their AC down to 69 or 70, the system overloads and nobody gets AC. I can understand that. I just hope you all understand where this is headed. See, for me, we installed solar panels at the new facility we're putting together. And a lot of people say solar panels are unreliable. They're not going to do what you think they're going to do. And I'm like, no, 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 look, I'm not doing solar panels because I think I'm saving the planet. Um, I'm doing solar plan- panels because when this happens, I'll have my own energy. Basically, when you buy solar panels, you're effectively, I mean, I think the energy return on energy invested is like not that good, like one to 1.2 or something, meaning you're not, you're, you're getting a little bit of a gain. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. We have these big batteries, but basically the energy required to produce those solar panels is effectively stored for you in the ability of those solar panels to generate electricity. I know not everybody can get solar panels, but, uh, you know, do what you can. They sell these portable solar panel things online with batteries. You just got to be able to get off the grid in some way. I think the simple answer is, yo, get out of cities. But to believe that we can just sit back and there's going to be energy forever with all this going on, we planned ahead. We've got these massive batteries Solar panels charge during the day and then discharge at night because, you know, but we got massive solar power because we want to be able to operate. We want to be able to operate in the event that the grid gets strained. But here's the best part. It doesn't matter for this business. If we really do get to the point where we've got some climate emergency and they're shutting everything down, then what ends up happening is you can't watch me anyway. You guys need electricity to watch my videos. So that's something, isn't it? Yeah. They say that California is five years ahead of the rest of the country, so I hope y'all are paying attention to what's going on. California declares grid emergency warning of blackouts. Amazing. Electricity use seen hitting five-year high early next week. Consumers were asked to conserve as temperatures. So I just want to make sure I clarify. The Excel customers think this this is a Denver story. It's happening all over. But California is where the fun stuff's happening. California officials declared a statewide grid emergency to cope with surging demand for power amid a blistering heat wave, raising the prospect for rolling blackouts. Ooh, fun. The California Independent System Operator issued a level one energy emergency alert around 3.10 p.m. local time Wednesday after tapping all of its available power supplies. 
The notice, which comes after officials asked homes and businesses to conserve, is a warning that the state is anticipating power shortages. It's the biggest test for California's grid since the summer of 2020, when rolling outages engulfed portions of the state. It comes as Russia's war in Ukraine triggers an energy crisis in Europe, and as record temperatures driven by climate change tax grids around the globe. It's pretty clear Mother Nature has outrun us. Governor Gavin Newsom, who issued an emergency proclamation Wednesday to free up extra power supply, said during a news conference, the reality is we are living in an age of extremes, extreme heat, extreme drought. Yeah, they're actually in a drought and they've been in a drought for some time. Now that I don't blame anybody on because I don't, they say it's climate change, but I'm like, dude, maybe, but like it not raining is a thing that happens a lot. You know, Uh, droughts have, have happened throughout history and there are periods of drought. But I will point out to all of you, my friends, the east coast of this country gets tremendous rainfall. Tremendous. It never stops raining in Florida. Actually, in Seattle, it never stops raining either. California, you're a desert. You've been a desert. California only survives off of Colorado River water. Okay, so northern California, you've got the Bay Area, you've got the Delta, all that stuff. Southern California, it's Colorado River water. So when it ain't, when it went, when it's not working out, yo, you're a desert. You've always been. Yeah. Great. Newsom orders temporary uh, order temporarily loosens environmental regulations on gas burning power plants, allowing them to run full tilt during the heat wave, which the governor said could last for a week. It also allows businesses to use backup generators rather than pulling electricity from the grid and permits ships and the state's busy ports to generate their own power while docked. But they're not allowed to do that. I mean, maybe it's a waste of fuel, to be honest. The order also warned that the grid operator known as Kaiso forecast potential electricity shortages of three gigawatts each evening from September 4th through September 6th. The worst dry spell in 1,200 years has gripped nearly every inch of California with drought this summer, leaving rivers and reservoirs perilously low. That has significant, significant implications for a state that generates about 10% of its electricity from hydroelectric dams and has aggressively closed natural gas power plants in recent years. The grid operator reported that about 9 gigawatts of power generating capacity wasn't available Wednesday, including a 480 megawatt natural gas unit in SoCal. A gigawatt is enough power for about 750,000 homes in California. Officials asked residents to conserve power on both Wednesday and Thursday between 4 and 9 p.m. local time as temperatures soar above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for. We banned your gas cars, are making you buy electric, and now we're telling you you can't charge them. Beautiful. I love it. Hey, this will be great to deal with traffic. Maybe people will ride bikes more. And, and hold on there a minute. Hold on there a minute. I got to be I got to be real. When God closes a door, he opens a window. You got a lot of big fat people in California. They eat too much. They don't exercise. Maybe we do need for short stints people to ride bikes, okay? I've, I've always been the kind of person that preferred exercise. So when I lived in Los Angeles, we had buses, we had taxis, we had all that stuff, of course. I got a bike. I would ride my bike 10 miles. I'd get up early in the morning because LA is a big area. I'd, I'd have to ride from, you know, the eastern part of LA, the downtown, and then go all the way down. I mean, maybe it wasn't 10 miles, but it was like maybe that round trip or something. No big deal to me. It was fun. Now, the problem was the hills. You know, you get a big hill and you're like, eh, and you decide to walk it. But when I grew up on the south side of Chicago, we had to skateboard. I had to skateboard three or four miles. When I, I had to skateboard three or four miles to get to the park. So I, I got no problem with that. But there are a lot of people that jump in their car to drive like two blocks to go to the fast food shop or whatever. Maybe people need to not do that. However, I must add, I don't know if the authoritarianism is the answer. But there's, there's the big ethical conundrum. If people are self-interested and won't do the bare minimum for themselves or others, what do you do? I mean, let's think about it for, for a couple of seconds. You've got, you've got Michael Bloomberg. He comes out and he's like, we got to tax, uh, you got to tax this large drinks because people are too stupid not to drink it. It's like, well, you know, he's right. People do like drinking their gallon size big gulps and uh, supersized drinks at McDonald's. So he put a tax on them. I don't know if that's appropriate. If people want to do that, that's what they want to do. But then you have this mentality among these these global elites that, look, man, people are, we have, we have morbidly obese homeless people. It's, it's a, a driver of cancer and other mental, uh, you know, and physical and, and mental issues. 
Maybe people need to start eating better and exercising more. Maybe people won't do what's best for themselves. And that's what leads to these uh, deeply authoritarian systems. And I guess my point is, I think it's wrong. You know, look, if people are too stupid to save their own lives, you are responsible for, for saving your own life. So my view is, if the people in the cities keep growing and, and they want to be yeast that farts themselves to death, fine, whatever, I'll leave and make sure I've done what I have to do to survive. I will advocate for those people to do better. But if they don't, I don't think a cudgel is the right thing to do. And for a variety of reasons. First, it's a violation of individual human rights. You as a, as a human being, as an individual, have a right to decide for yourself what is best for you. I don't know. I'll advocate for what I think is best, but I can't decide for you. The centralization of authority and power is bad. What we need is a decentralized system where people do some stuff, some people do other stuff, and the best stuff wins out, right? So I think that's the most important point. If you homogenize the system because you think you're better and smarter, then ultimately what ends up happening is a system collapse because you're not. But there is another, there's, a, there's another issue in that meritocracy. The people who are gluttonous and insane destroy themselves. We don't want them to. I don't want people sterilizing their kids. I don't want people aborting their kids. I don't want people sitting back in a lounge chair stuffing their mouth, mouth full of Twinkies all day and getting fat. I want people exercising. I want people, you know, either running or figuring out what works for them, eating better foods, cutting out the sugar, but I can't tell them how to live. The end result is these people will be less likely to procreate. It is, it is negative. I'm not saying it's a good thing that people eventually, you know, they die off. But if you're going to sterilize your kids, abort your kids, and then gorge yourself, you're probably not going to have a successful genetic line. That is natural selection. We want to resist it to a certain degree. But also realize, if people are given the right to choose and to live the way they want, then, this, then, then nature itself will take hold. The challenge, I suppose, is that, you know, we can only technologically advance ourselves to comfort so far. We've got refrigerators. We've got clean drinking water. We've got hot, hot showers. We've got, uh, you know, cl uh, clean. Uh, I mentioned we've we got uh, refrigerators, all that stuff. You, you get the point, AC. But eventually the system strains itself because energy and luxury, it's not infinite. And these people eventually will just suffer for it in the end. City folk, I think, are going to be in for the worst of it. Look, hyper concentrating all of these resources into these cities creates a massive pile of waste. And the way I described it uh, a couple, a few weeks ago on IRL, Timcast IRL, was that if you take a bunch of chickens and you put them in an area and they all poop, okay, eventually the rain comes and it washes the poop away and the plants they grow from that poop making the poop a good thing. Yes. So uh, you like it. We, we like it when the chickens come out and do their chicken business. It's good for the plants in the ground and, and the poop gets washed away with the rain and mixed into the soil and it makes it fertile and all that stuff. Excellent. The cycle of nature. However, what happens when you put all the chickens in one small space? The poop doesn't wash away. Plants can't grow. The poop piles up. The smell is, is awful. You see, too much in one area is not sustainable. And that's what these cities have become. You can't take 10 million people and jam them into Manhattan. Because then how do we dissipate all of this waste? Now, I'm not talking about human waste. I'm talking about just plastic and everything. How do you get food into that city? It's getting harder and harder. I think cities are terrible, man. We got to spread out. You know, some people talk about overpopulation. You've got, you know, the likes of Bill Gates saying there's, there's too many people. Yeah, maybe too many people in one place. I do think we are overpopulated. That's my personal opinion. And I've argued with people like, you know, Michael Malice, for instance, he thinks we're not. And, I, and we agreed, though, like maybe the cities are too dense for sure. But my, 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 I'm talking about overpopulation, not just in the sense of resource consumption. You know, I think pollution's a problem. There are dead zones in the ocean. There's plastic garbage. I'm not saying America is to blame for all of it. In fact, it's mostly India and China. I do think that if you keep pumping carbon into the atmosphere, you're going to have negative impacts. Some argue that the plants will just grow faster and absorb the carbon faster. And that's a possibility, too. But my point here is we have too many people politically. Seriously, how do we govern effectively? You can't. The system has become so dense with people. 775,000 people per congressional district. You can't represent all those people. And as there are more and more people, it becomes increasingly more likely to destabilize. Here's what happens. 
let's say you got 10,000 people living in a district. Early American days. One person says, I'm going to try and speak to as many people as possible. Represent their views and values. Well, if 1% of those people, 10,000, you know, you got 100 people, wants to go out and protest or whatever, that's a problem. That's 100 people. That's going to be rough. But for the most part, you got more people who are going to push back. What happens when you got a, a, a million people? Now there are 10,000 people screaming and rabbling and throwing bricks. How do you stop that? The system cannot handle that strain. So it becomes more likely to destabilize the more people there are. And now we've got hundreds of millions of people. And you think we can represent them effectively? We can't, especially with the Internet allowing subcultures to expand and grow. The end result, my friends, is overpopulation results in political instability. I'll tell you, you want to know the truth? The world, your life would be better with our current level of technology, but half the population size. And I'm not saying that to advocate for anything, but it's true. Politics would be a bit more stable. Resource consumption would be, uh, pollution would be less of an issue. People would be a little bit more spread out. There'd be more robust debates, but there is just, in my opinion, too many people. Of course, I'm not advocating for authoritarianism. No, I'm advocating for, I'm not even advocating for, I'm just saying natural selection will occur, whether you want it to or not. You can try and fight the machine. You can try and control it like these global elites do, trying to decide how you can live your life. And I'm like, bro, you need to let people live their lives for one reason, because the strong will survive. And those most adapt, uh, adaptable will survive. And the people who are blind, gluttonous fools living in big cities will struggle with it. And maybe they won't survive in a great catastrophe. I don't want people to die. I'm just saying it is better off that the world naturally has these processes happen than global elites who think they're smarter than you decide how you should live. But at, the, at, at any rate, the new future is here upon us, my friends. It's, uh, it's going to be a whole lot of fun. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.